saw the swallows catching in inside. Insects hatching. But a very, very important food resource. I always wonder with swallows and so if they're catching flies and beetles on the wing, doesn't it hurt their mouths when you're whacking in? I don't know, I think Chris probably knows that. Not just birds feeding on midges, other creatures around here too. Things like this. Dragonflies. Now, yesterday we looked at the dragonfly larva, hugely predatory underwater. This one's come up, climbed up this stem of grass, and it's hatched out. The adult has emerged, and here it is a four spotted chaser. A, again, an incredibly prolific predator. They'll fly around and grab those midges from out of the air in their legs and munch them in the sky. Here's a damselfly. You can tell the difference. The damselfly holds its wings over its back, whereas the dragonfly sticks them out at 90 degrees. Fantastic. Very interesting things, midges. Everything has its place. Now, let's look now at another watery animal, one that's very close to all our hearts, but one that definitely has a dark side. It's been a long time coming this year, but spring has finally arrived on the River Derwent. Oh. And already the first signs of new life have appeared. A family of mallard ducklings. These ducks must be one of the nation's most popular and familiar birds. They could even be one of the first wild animals many people will meet. But there's more to this tranquil scene than first meets the eye. Because the secret to the mallard's success is much more dramatic and even sinister than might be imagined. These ducks have chosen a particularly prestigious location as their home. Chatsworth House is set in the heart of the Peak District in Derbyshire. And it's here that a three-year study has helped uncover the hidden world of the Mallard duck. You see, mallards are the UK's most widespread water bear. It's thought that there are more than a hundred thousand pairs breeding here. They're highly adaptable birds, which thrive in ponds, lakes, rivers and wetlands. In fact, their main habitat requirement seems to be the chance to get their feet wet. Another key to their success is a very broad diet. They dabble underwater using their sensitive beaks to feel their way around and filter out plant and animal matter. Now it's vital for a water bird to keep waterproof, and mallards achieve this through their intricate feather structure and by rubbing their plumage with oil from a gland on their rump. This allows any water to run straight off a duck's back. Even when underwater, the down feathers underneath stay completely dry. One of the most striking things about mallards is their sexual dimorphism, meaning that the males and the females look very different. In fact, their plumage is so different, they were once thought to be separate species. The females want to pair up with the most colourful males because it's a sign of vitality. The fittest males are also the first to come into breeding plumage, giving them a head start in the season. This pair have been happily paired up for a few months now. Their courtship today is simple. It's a bit of head bobbing. But mating on the water certainly has its challenges. Now this looks like a straightforward duck meets drake situation, but looks on the front.